as you may or may not know, the city, uh, the city is uh, moving forward on their uh, water project. We've had some setbacks. Um, we didn't meet certain grant criteria. So we're reapplying on the uh, community block development grant. Um, and part of our water um, our water revamp was to put new meters out. Uh, I'm sorry, new valves out by the tank. And that's been completed. Some of you might have had your water turned off a little while, and that's what that was all about. They needed to be done. Those those things have been in the ground since you know the 60s. Uh, we did the master. Uh, meter coming out um, and now what we want to do is all the water meters for, for the community we want to replace them and we want to replace them with electronic meters Be careful, and I'll tell you why it's electronic. Out here for the blame because <laughs> it takes our maintenance guys two and a half days to read all the meters. Thank you. It's wear and tear on the vehicles. It's uh, a lot of man hours. It's not very accurate. If we have an electronic system, we can keep track of water flow, water loss, water usage. Somebody can call up, and we can we can track their water, um, and we can get the readings. Almost half of the readings just out in the parking lot. So um, that's the way we want to move forward. Plus, um, I've been in contact with uh, some members of the RDC and. Uh, the money that we're going to be spending on the water meters is coming out of Splash, uh, Splash 7. And uh, that will offset the costs that we would be responsible for for the grant, for the bigger system where we're going to be replacing pipes. So everything's kind of falling into place. There's a couple of setbacks. But that being said, um, we've talked to um, people about different meters and, and and that kind of thing, and we have a presentation by Master Meter, and they're here tonight, and uh, would you please approach council and tell us about your meters. This is the whole unit. Now, like I said, I'm with Consolidated Pipe and Supply. We're probably one of the largest purchasers of water meters in the United States. We purchase for hundreds and thousands of customers, uh, just like you. We do Lowndes County. We do Valdez. We have Valdostomized meters from us. Uh, we sell meters to all meters. And the more that we sell, the bigger customer we are. Now, why is that important? It's important because when you purchase something like this, you don't want to be out on the limb by yourself. You want someone that has a lot of leverage that can get things done for you and also solve problems for you if any should arise. Well, Consolidated is a wholesale distributor for water, gas, sewer, industrial, and believe it or not, we're one of the few people that manufactures control panels for nuclear power plants. 
So we have a lot of investment involved, and we want to make sure nothing interferes with our customers when we're dealing with them. The biggest thing that we have is that Consolidated got interested in this, this meter project years ago, and they hired people like me to do nothing but go around and look after these projects once they're sold to make sure customers are happy. Now, there's several things that I want to talk about. First of all, I gave you a quote in there of what basically the project would cost. Second is, I want to talk to you about the risk involved in it. These units, there's, there's warranties behind the quote, and I want you to know about the warranties on these things. This is real important. If you get involved in these things, you want them to last. You want everything to last for a long time. Well, as you'll see, if you don't don't, don't worry about going through it tonight because I'm going to just go over it real quickly. Once you buy the meter, you're talking about something that's going to cost around $200 and it's going to be warranted for basically 15 years or a total of 20 years actually. It's going to be warranted for five full years to new meter actors. And then it's going to work for the next 15 years at repaired meter actors. Now what can you buy? You buy a house and you pay $50,000 for a house, how long is it warranted? So you turn the key and move in, right? If you buy a car, how long is it really warranted? But you buy this, this little water meter and this thing is going to be out there for the next 20 years. And it's going to be on the dime every time. It's going to be right you're going to get paid for what it's doing. Now, what is it? This is a neat little idea. <coughs> Believe it or not, this <coughs> is an employee of the city. It doesn't eat. It doesn't drink. It doesn't <coughs> retire. But it does its job. It's actually your sales clerk. Just like any sales clerk in any town, in any store, it takes your product, and when a customer wants it, unlike having to go to a Walmart where you have to drive to it, you provide a tremendous service. You give a product at the point of need to the customer. And this little rascal sits out there and actually monitors each one of your customers. And when they want some of your product, they turn on a faucet, it runs, and this little guy says, this is how much you use. Turns off, <coughs> turns on again, it measures it, and it says, ooh, this is how much it used. Well, it used to be kind of a dumb item, just a little dumb robot. All you could do was it just had a little register and you just had to go look at it. But they're smarter than that now. We actually put a brain in it, and you're taught put in front of you, that's an actual brain. That thing knows who it is, it'll know where it is, and it knows what's going on. It knows if somebody has turned the meter around, somebody's trying to steal something, it knows if somebody's trying to mess with it and, and tamper with it with something, it knows whether or not when the people actually use the water. So that if somebody has a broken pipe, it's going to keep up with it. Because it's got, it's going to keep, it's going to store 4,000 hourly data points in there. So that if you have a problem with, and the customer, I don't use that water, you'll be able to go back and pull almost five months worth of data. You can see when they were using it, and you can see when they fixed the problem, and when they call it. So that everybody pays for what they use. They don't pay another dime more, or another dime less. They pay exactly for what they do. And this little rascal now can keep up with it. Not only that, it knows who it is. And it talks every 11 seconds. It says, here I am. This is how much I've that's gone through here, not so. So a little bit. Now, every 11 seconds. How does it communicate with the central thing here? We will go through with the computer through RF, radio frequency. It's generating 
a radio signal every 11 seconds. Okay. And it's strong enough that you have a receiver on a computer, and that computer reads them every 11 seconds when it's driving. You told me that if it goes under water, mm -hmm. it'll, you told me that if it goes under water, it will still read. Yeah, we're gonna. How, how many feet? It, it will read like up to four feet. So if it goes under water four feet, it'll still keep it's it. It's still going to read. Not as far, but it will read. 100 feet, something like that. It won't read 2,000 feet. This, you know, when we went to get FCC approval, we were one of the last people to do that. And most of the radio frequencies at the time were for up north, and they were in basement. We went to the FCC for approval, saying, hey, we're in the Sun Belt. All of our customers use meter boxes. We don't have any basement. They're going to be in the ground, they're going to be in a box, and they're going to be underwater. We want to be able to generate enough power to get out of that box, out of that water, to a computer, same line of sight that our customers claim they can hold it up and do it out of a base. And that's how we got our approval up front. So we came out of the box, out of the water at the same distance as everybody else. Okay? Now, here again, what kind of risk have you got with the electronics? The electronics is warranted just like the water meter, and it's warranted for a period of 10 full years. If anything happens to it that it fails to transmit, I take care of it. I come pick it up, I get it back to the factory, I get you another. You Is it warranted by the factory or by your son? By the factory. It's warranted by Master Meter, the manufacturer. Okay? I just make sure they live up to their warranty. Speaking on warranties, back I see right here it says for 24 months. No, sir, it says for right 10 here years. Back, it's right here, the thing is for 24 months. Mm -hmm. For a period of 24 months. This is right there. Yeah, that's for the manufacturing. That's talking about materials and workmanship. If there's a problem with the body of the meter, something like that, but the accuracy of it is warranted down here. This tells you for five full years. For the next 15 years, what's going to happen? It's going to be on you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Warranty the accuracy, not the right. meter. Right, that's right. Because the meter's either going to, it's brass, it's going to work, and or it's not. And then the actual warranty of the electronics is right here. It's 10 full years, full warranty. After that, it prorates itself for the next 10 years. Okay. So, you have basically hey, 10 years that can be no cost to you whatsoever. Charles, if, if I may, I'm Brandon Foster, I'm the manufacturer's rep for the mm -hmm. Meter. That's more of an aesthetics for the 24, materials and work machines is, is more of an aesthetics deal. The, the, the case itself, the brass casing, is warranted for 25 years, which it does state on there. The 10 year is a battery warranty. This is a battery powered product. And then from an accuracy perspective, it's warranted for 20 years. So the materials and workmanship is an every, every meter manufacturer has it in there. If you know, if the, the dial face starts peeling from an aesthetics perspective, that's two years. But we guarantee accuracy, we guarantee it's going to transmit for the life of the, the battery, which is 10 years. And then there's an additional prorated 10 years. So there's 20 years with accuracy from the battery. And then from, a, from an accuracy perspective of the me mechanical measurement of the meter is 20 years, and then from an integrity of the brass is 25 years. We have the single <coughs> longest warranty on the market. So, uh, I, and I just wanted to make sure I answered your question. The materials and workmanship is more of an aesthetics thing with the meter itself, okay. if, that make, if that makes any sense. If that sheds any light on your question. Okay. But I wanted you to know right off the bat, before we started talking about the product, that we, we're going to be out there for a long time. Okay, this is not a fly by night. You're going to start costing you money as soon as you pay for it because it's going to stay in the ground and we're going to see to it stays in the ground. Now, the register that you have, you know, you say, well, how do you know? Well, we've been doing this for a long time. 
We have been doing it for a long time. As Brandon says, boy, you've been around since dirt. You know everybody. I said that about you, not about them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I did it, but I have. I was around during the touchery days when we first came out, like Valdosta does. They go along the street and they touch a pad with a wand and read. Well, we did that originally. That's how we got started. But we were the first people to do it with a battery. We put a battery inside our module. So we didn't have to draw battery from the hand unit that it was used. We you actually put the battery in the, the, the meter itself. Well, when we did that, we came up with a problem. You talk about are there going to be problems? We sure did. We came up with a problem. First off, our chip is so efficient. We didn't use enough battery. We didn't use it hard enough that the chemical divider in the battery would not get hard and it wouldn't let the two chemicals mix. Well, that was a problem because then you had to hit it, make it work. And the same thing, if you put batteries on a shelf, you think <coughs> they're dead, but actually the two chemicals won't mix. So we had to put a bleeding resistor in, and we bled off just enough power to keep that membrane separating the two chambers from getting hard so it <coughs> dissolves at the right speed. Well, we knew right off the bat exactly how long our batteries were going to last because we were pulling exactly the same amount of current out of it all the time. Well, for AMR in touch read, that turned out to be a pretty neat thing. The touch read quickly went by. We wanted to do radio. We didn't want to walk. We wanted to drive as fast as we could put in the speed limit, <laughs> and read these meters, not walking, but as quick as we could. Well, that was going to require a tremendous amount of power, more so than we were able to do with that. But our engineers figured out a way where the battery people come to us and say, hey, we, we've got this made. What we're going to do, the power we bleed off, instead of getting rid of it like we do now, we're going to put it in a capacitor like a saving deposit, saving deposit box. And we're going to save up so much power, every 11 seconds that capacitor is going to turn loose. It's going to blister out a amount of power, and it's going to power up those radios, and it's going to send the signal out, and then it's going to come back and go to sleep for another run. We know exactly how long, basically, our, and we know what our bell curve is. We know that's why we know they're going to be there 10 years, and then a certain percentage of them are going to start dying off. So our, our people that's going to read the meter, they'll have to drive by it. They'll drive by it with the vehicle, right. right and they, they don't automatically go to the city hall and they don't send them. City Hall. We're talking about a drive-by system here. Now we we can get into it. The same same computers will talk to a fixed base. It's just a lot more expensive. Now we could read these meters probably in 30 minutes or so, as <coughs> quick as we can drive Lake Park. Do you do Lakeland, Georgia? Lakeland. No, they no. have something like where they ride by. Or Wand or a gun. Yeah, but we don't need a wand. We don't have to do that. It's just a man magnetic antenna. I'm going to show you a picture of it. It's a magnetic antenna that sticks on the top of the car. Here again, this all has to go into water. It lives in water. This is one of the first ones we made. Now, y'all just pass that down. There's a little bit of difference. When we designed this, the there was a chief engineer from Rockwell International that designed a can that would keep water out for a visual read register. He designed also this can to keep water out for us. But unfortunately, when we decided to manufacture it, the man with the money knew he was going to make millions of these things. And he said, you know something? I can build it just a little cheaper and save 50 cents. Sounds good. This, this, the one you I gave you first, 
has been tested by Mocon, and we know exactly how long it'll be before moisture can go through that stainless steel, go through that glass, or go through that, that gasket in there. We know exactly how long it'll be. It's been tested. We're one of the few people that has tested. But that one, which looks just like this one, won't work. And that's what we found out. We found out in Lowndes County. It's something like nitrogen fail or something. It doesn't have to be. It's, it's drier. There's no condensation. So originally, we came out with this unit here. Well, it fogged. We started having some fog. Master Meter realized what had happened. Master Meter stood behind it. We replaced it. It cost the customer anything. We replaced it all. I don't want to let you have the idea that it was an easy road to get to where we are. But we are there from trial and error in the field, knowing the mistakes we made and correct them. Now we've got the greatest problem that's on this market. We have virtually no problems. Every once in a while, we'll end up with one broken because somebody dropped it. But other than that, we've had no problems whatsoever with the new Mr. Mayor, the, the, it actually carries a, a submersion rating called IP68. A lot of electronics carry an IP rating, whether it's dust or 65 or whatever. But it, is, it does carry an IP68 rating, so it means all that means is the product is designed to be submerged up to 10 feet of water without failure. That doesn't mean it's designed to work under 10 feet of water. It just means it's meant to be in a moist environment. Okay. Jeff, did you want to say something? I'm taking that there's two kind of computer pieces in that meter. They're what? Is there two kind of pieces, two computer pieces in that kind of meter? Because how is the flow of the water going to tell that meter that you got there if it's cased in. Because when the flow of the water goes through the meter, it spins. You're right. Correct. So right. you're is there another piece of computer down in the bottom that tells the top piece what is what is going on? You're absolutely so right. is both of them brain. There's no there's no computer in there, but there is a magnetic Coupling. Okay. And the chamber has a magnet. And when the water flows, it turns around here. There is a mechanical gearing so that you can read them. Yes. And there is a computer. Okay. You're absolutely right. You're one of the few people that's ever caught on to that. Well, so that we have a backup. We can visually. The next question it. on your gears, on your gears in your thing, you got so many gearing in there. Right. What's the what's what's the tariff on them? On the plastic pieces? Uh, virtually none. Okay. Virtually none. So you, you don't have none coming back? Right. We don't have any none coming back. Like right. Okay. On the face of it, mm -hmm. most of the ones, it's in the ground right now. After a year, you can't read them because the face is dirty. What kind of warranty? Transmitting an RF signal so you're no longer manually reading them. Okay. Them. The biggest problem that you have when you manually read them, believe it or not, is. But what, what about if I want to manually read them? Just, I feel like they're getting some, uh, the computer, it's actually blowing by. Let's say it's been in there for five years, mostly on a meter like that, you have blow by because your, uh, your uh, spindle's in there. Well, actually, the water will actually pressurize them, build the hole bigger, and let water ease by there without telling your meter. This That's one what you see a lot. That, this one won't. That doesn't happen on this one. And not only that, what's really neat about this here, you would visually read it just like a regular meter. Okay. So you can look at this, look at your computer, make sure they match up. Okay. Now, what you're talking about, we don't have that slippage okay. like that anymore. We, we don't, that's been designed out of it. Now we use Bernoulli's theory on here so that when the water comes into that chamber, it's moving faster in the bottom than it is on the top. So when it's under normal operating condition, 
There's no bearing surfaces at all anymore. That's why they last so long. They don't touch anything anymore. There's no wear, no tear, except at low flow. So none of the pieces down at the bottom with the water touching? Mm -hmm. You warranty all that? Absolutely. Yes. And what's a, what, what is that what is that on? I mean, is it inside mm -hmm. of the case? Is it plastic? Is it what? It's plastic. It's a it's actually a, a plastic type material. It's not exactly plastic, but it's a polymer material. Okay. okay. And it's so if we have sand in the water, oh, you're we saying have sand. Okay. Hot water heaters don't I'm like just, sand. I'm just asking. Yeah. You know. Hot water heaters don't like sand, but these water meters, sand doesn't affect. I can take sand. I used to demo them that way. I'd pour sand in the end of them, and then connect the hose to it. Let's see the sand come out and run like a jam. But go on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the first person I ever have been in a presentation that caught that you had to have two types of of gearing in that he, race. He's a water guy. That's huh? He's a water guy. That's why he's. Oh, uh, okay, but he caught that. That's unusual. But it, yeah. but in the in the interest of uh, not being here all night. No, I, I'm gonna. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I gave you some yeah. data on the actual <laughs> meter itself. Amen. Okay. And I love this. I'm going to talk about it. I, the reading system that you, it actually is a computer like this, it's in the front of the and magnetic antennas do it on top, so it just translates to it, and then the software is just going to come and chop the place. It comes up yellow. <laughs> You're going to have to take banana no matter what. <laughs> But I've got copies of this so that I wouldn't go through this because I didn't want you to bore you with the detail. But all that accuracy stuff that he just talked about, as a matter of fact, is explained in this. Oh, those were very good questions. Right. They were super good questions. It's the first time, like I say, anybody's ever talked about. So I Mr. am proud of you. Mr. May, this is a. Uh, <coughs> we have about 55 utilities in the state of Georgia currently using this system. How long have you been allowed? How long have your meters been in the lab? Uh, just meters or the AMR system? The AMR system's been there since probably 12, 13 years. Okay. So the meters That's a pretty good representation. Oh, I mean, okay. our water is obviously superior to Columbus County. But, <laughs> uh, but it's a pretty good representation of how long the meters will last. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they've, been, uh, they've been a match meter customer for probably 20 plus years. Yeah. Uh, and they, they probably put our very first AMR system we ever produced. We, we've since produced five million, <coughs> five million radios in the United States. So, so, so Charles Brandon, let me, let me ask you this. Um, we put the meters in the ground. We have one that, that, that fails. Sure. How long before we uh, get it replaced? Uh, tomorrow. And the, the good thing about Consolidated Pipe, if I can may add, is they have, we have seven branches in the state of Georgia, all of which stock this product. And I live in Thomasville. Do so. we get do we get um, any standby meters that we can oh, we can't do anything with these? these. Well, what, what we typically any any municipal that moves forward with an AMR system, we typically ask that they keep a, an acceptable amount of inventory in case of vandalism and things like that. Okay. And you are going to have failure with any electronics. I wouldn't want you. I wouldn't want you to stop more than four or five because I've got it. You don't need it. But you do need four or five on a day-by-day -day basis. When you call me, I'll be here the next day. So, yeah. But you need something for this afternoon. So, <coughs> you know, I just pick up what you took out, and I send it back for you so that it costs you. Okay. And I imagine that it's a county, and the city of Alaska also have the same years. And if we run into a problem with the years, kind of access, uh, problem accessing the part, we can probably get it from them and replace it. Absolutely. Us. As a matter of fact, I give them trays, so they just, there's some in my cabin's office, uh, and every once in a while I just swap them out because I don't want to ask for the chamber. Sometimes our city limits all this county measuring water meters for the oceans. There's one little side of the road, one on the other. Will we have any problem reading their water meters instead of ours? No. Like I said, that thing knows who it is and where it is, and I would tell them that you are. Customer number 173, and it'll only read 173. It won't read 39, but they're 39. 
but you would be in like 173 or something. And you're talking about leap just real quick. These things are smart enough. I can say, okay, I want you to give me the read. And when I ask for it, you give me the read that happened at 12 o'clock at midnight or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll get everybody's 3 o'clock read. I could hit that well meter that you're talking about at 3 o'clock. I know exactly how much water went into the system at 3 o'clock and how much you actually sent out at 3 o'clock. We know exactly what your water loss is. Not an estimate. Exactly. If you drive by, I saw where it's got some different things about maybe come through this blue, but it shows like where a leak or something. Mm -hmm. Does that show right. on the computer? It shows on the computer and on the meter. How does it do that? There's a leak indicator. You call the customer called in, you say, Well go outside and look in the box. See that little star in the middle? Yes, sir. If it's moving, there's water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only that, but like I say, it's going to tell these folks there's a leak. Now, I used to say, send them a letter or note or call them, tell them they got a leak. You know something? I haven't found anybody that appreciates that. First thing out of everybody's mouth, I don't have a leak. You know something? We get paid to sell them. If they want to pay for it and they want it to go down the toilet, that's none of my good words. But it's going to tell you they got a leak. It's also going to tell you that they had a leak last month and they didn't fix it and you got a leak again this month. So the customer service wise, you're going to either be able to let the public know if they want to know. If they don't want to know, that's none of my business. Okay. Any more questions? Charles, thank you so much. Brandon, thank you. Boss, I got one. You said that this thing's going to be sending off uh, an electronic signal. Okay. I've seen on some of these houses and trailers and whatnot where the power companies are transferring <coughs> over to electric boxes. Mm -hmm. To where they don't have to send out people. Mm -hmm. Now, you got electric current coming to the house for power. You got an electric signal going out for the power box. Now you're talking about putting one in the ground. Mm -hmm. It's actually a two part question. The first one is you've now got three different power sources. Three different RF oh, right. sources. Same difference. Right. Three different sources going out. <coughs> right. What's the possibility of this thing getting confused? Or like your signal going to somebody else or your box, your main control box mm -hmm. reading the other person's signals? No, we can't. With the FCC, we can't step on them. We're at the bottom of the pole. And But the protocol that we send out is only interpreted with our box. Nobody can interpret our protocol with us. We, it's just like you can speak Japanese, you can speak English, you can speak Chinese, but you got to be able to hear it in Chinese, hear it in Japanese, and hear it in English. Okay, and I got to use I, a different. I, I need to cut this short because yeah, we got to use a long different agenda. agenda. Uh, if you have any questions, for Charles Brandt. Uh, well, Could I, can I just ask <coughs> one, just a little short one? Why don't you take him outside, Joe? Okay, we, 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 we've got to move on. Okay? But I, I do appreciate you coming. I hope I covered everything, though. <laughs> okay, we, we got it here. Thank you.